Welcome back to Cool Club's headquarters here in Scottsdale. We're here with CEO and founder Mark Timms and uh, VP of Fitting and Performance, Marty Jertson from Ping. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming back. Um, today we want to touch on something a little different. It's not golf club related, it's golf ball related. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the, one of the coolest things I heard. You, we talked about it last year a little bit in a meeting, but ball namic. Tell everyone, you know, its purpose and then let's dig into how you got some of the data and what it's good for. Yeah, I mean, it starts with our motivation, which is help people play their best golf. And, and um, it, it is somewhat related to clubs and the fact that, you, you know, we want to use golf ball to help overcome any, any shortcomings from the club fitting um, and kind of marry club fitting and ball fitting together. And at Ping, I mean, our founder, Carson, right. uh, we used to make golf balls, obviously. Those who don't remember that, the two-tone balls and yep. all the stuff. We had molding uh, oh, <laughs> equipment at our headquarters and... Um, and uh, but but it was it was it was a tough uh, tough industry to get into. But we've always tested them, and Karsten always said that the golf ball is the tuning fork to club design, right? And so we've always had to have our pulse on what they're doing. Um, and what we've noticed in the last you know decade or so is that golf balls have become more diverse in how they perform. And we saw some very interesting things happening aerodynamically. There, there were right. some golf balls that got launched out with our tour players. It really started with them that they were seeing with their camera-based launch monitors. They, they, you know, they just measured the initial conditions right. and not the downrange flight. They're seeing these balls that had very high spin. So they're low spin players. They'd be hitting this ball. It has very high spin. They're like, this is the perfect ball. Then they go play it on the course and they were seeing totally different results. This, this, this particular golf ball they were hitting was flying very low. So they're like, well, how's this thing high spin? If it's, I'm going out and playing, it's flying low. It's going through the wind really well. What's going on? They came to us. Plus, they're like, that's hey, changed what's over happening? a bunch of years, right? So the aerodynamics have gotten a lot more complex. And Because we did yes. ball testing way back when I had hot sticks technologies. And we were just looking at initial spin. And, yep. and back then, obviously, the initial spin difference at, you know, even 100 miles an hour, which is not a high driver speed or whatever, you know, it was like eight, 900 RPMs difference. Yeah. And some balls were considerably better than others. Yeah. And, and they've all gotten much, much better. I mean, yeah. all the balls are pretty good. I'm so glad you did this, by the way, because God forbid, I didn't want to do this ball testing. It's, a lot, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I have no wind. The it's testing. the hardest testing by far to do. On You're, a absolutely stuff, right. so, You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It blew I'm my mind. You didn't, yeah. I don't have to worry about it anymore. You yeah. hear about the process that you guys went through, which hopefully we touch on a little bit. It, it kind of blew my mind of like, oh, that really is all going on. And we get like a snapshot when we're when doing a fitting, exactly. of like the initial launch, initial spin. And then everything else actually happens after that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that, that kind of side of it. Yeah. So we, 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 as Mark said, the testing's very hard. And some, yeah. you know, we'll get our, we'll get our balls in, and we'll sometimes we'll wait to do our robot testing for several months because we need to test when there's absolutely zero wind. Yeah, I mean, hard. as close to zero as possible. And so we, we have our weather station data at our, at our test field that we use. We're always studying it. And most of the time we, do, we test golf balls. It seem, might seem kind of funny, but we test them in the pitch black. We oh, come in at sense. like 2, <laughs> 3 in the morning. Radar. It's all radar based. Right? It's, it's all, all radar. stuff if you got to see it all the way down. So, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to see it fly. Same thing with planes. You know, <laughs> land in the dark, right? So, so uh, yeah, usually we'll come in at like 2, 3 in the morning and do our test at a time when the temperature is not changing very much before sunrise. Gotcha. It's already cooled down a lot. And then there's as close to zero wind as possible. Is there so a we, temperature range you kind of test balls at? We want to we, we want to keep them just, just consistent apples, apples during reasons, right? the test. So yeah. if it takes like three or four hours to do our whole sweep, we want to make sure the temperature is not changing more than Got like it. five degrees total, okay. because yeah. that'll change obviously what's what's right. happening. You know, both with the flight and the club, the ball it's interaction. Density, there. And you get different aerodynamics exactly yeah and so uh, you know i think we were frustrated that man if, if these if the balls are all so different what's happening aerodynamically now what what do we design our clubs to right that was that right. was one of our questions yeah. like well where's the middle so yeah. we, we we do design our clubs kind of to the middle of what we see in our testing and then now we can use golf ball fitting to overcome any shortcomings and getting somebody perfectly optimized. And, right. and I think when we show some, some screen grabs here of the app and how it works, we can kind of walk through and talk through some of those scenarios. Like, you know, somebody wants to play a, a strong lofted iron set, in, but the spin might be too low, so they don't have enough stopping power. But the, but the iron otherwise is really good for them. What do you do? Yeah. You can come in with a golf ball that lands steeper. Or players once needs to play a little bit more loft in their driver to hit it straighter. Now their spin is a little bit too high to be 
optimal, what do you do? You can come up with golf ball that flies low, you know, both spins less and flies lower aerodynamically. I've, I've definitely done the dumb version of that, a dumb down version of that in the fitting before. We always ask our, our, our clientele, you know, what, what ball do you play? Yeah. And then during our fitting, you know, outdoors anyway, we're generally testing with a premium, like a Pro V1 ball. Yeah. So we're getting all this great data and I'll get to the end of it and I'll kind of look back and I'll look at the ball that they told me they were playing. I'm looking at the data from the Pro V1 and then I'm thinking, well, actually, you know what? You should be probably playing, and just from my personal knowledge of golf yeah. balls, this is much more intelligent. Um, like, okay, well, why don't you try a few of these golf balls because that might be the finishing touch to give you a little bit better right. flight, a little bit better distance. Well, we do have, obviously, all the different balls in the bays here at the store, but yeah. uh, you know, outside that stuff to go catch them all and yeah. bring them back. So. And, and what's fun about Balnamic, too, is that there's, um, you know, it, it, it fits your whole bag synergistically. And so what I mean by that is, you know, there's some thoughts that maybe you should start with short game first and work your way back and because you could kind of tune your driver or your irons to the the ball that you choose for short game but i don't know i mean that, that yeah. i think you you know there's more to you know driver fitting and iron fitting yeah, than, i'm assure you when you went through trying to figure out what <laughs> questions to ask and which way to lean on things that, exactly. that's complicated yeah right? so, so we i think that what, with balnamic what we've what our mission was here is to provide the same level of thinking about a ball fitting that our tour players do, right? And really get that to the everyday player. So have that same level of nuance because they get to go out on the tour range and test all the balls and then go play them on the course and keep testing and iterating, testing, iterating. You know, not we all, can, as normal people can't do that. So <laughs> right. this provides uh, the tool to be able to do that and provide those answers. But, you know, I think what the, the fun part is, and when, when we walk through it, we'll see, is that balls, uh, you know, you, you can match a ball to what you want it to do with the short game, to your putting feel, to your irons and your driving, all synergistically. And right. balls have so much diversity now, you can find that. And I'm looking through the, the questions you're asking, too. You're kind of asking them, is this more important to you or is that more important exactly. to you? Because that's really what it's all about, right? Yep. Is, yep. is the short game stuff super important? Are you really looking for distance? And those are the questions you're asking. So yeah, you're kinda, so we're you're kind of asking the right questions through it. We're getting that information throughout, and then on the results page, we provide you can still then go in and make decisions. Right. You don't have to pick the top ball we recommend. We give like five balls to you, and they might be better, or worse in yeah, certain you might areas. Might pick the best one for short game if that's your strong point. Exactly, whatever, and, and you know, that makes sense too. So. It, yep. So we still pass that power. So should we should we jump in? Let's do it. Let's do it. I think we should it? do it for Mark. Let's uh, let's pick All your right, ball. Sure. All right, Mark. Be interesting. Here we go. Okay. Handicap? Uh, I'm like a one to eight. I'm a seven. Probably That's a little a, better than that if I try. Uh, Sandbagging. I think the, the thing with <laughs> handicap is we don't use handicap to drive any of the algorithm. You don't. So, actually, so, that's no. interesting. I was it's just there to kind of thing. data Got collection it. Got thing. It. Yeah. So it's not I, like I hey, thought you might have actually. Your higher okay. handicap, or you should place their ball. So that's kind of. And then your your current ball? Um, play a bunch of different ones, but uh, put Callaway Chrome Soft LS. Okay. You can also our first selection here is you know it varies. Let's do it. Let's do it varies. Let's, you know? let's do it varies. So that the reason why we put that is that it would allow you to do some comparative analysis yeah. at, the, at the end, and we don't prevent your current ball from winning is your is your top ball. Right. Right. In no way will that. And, and honestly, the, the reason I picked that ball yeah. is I, I was playing the other one before and you know played some Titleist and some other things, but uh, it was the lowest spin ball you got, and I hit it super high and don't curve it much, and I just figured you know it's soft feeling around the greens. Yep. And yep. I don't need to spin as much. Yep. So. All right. Zip code. That's it right there. That's it. Right. Five, yeah. Two five five. Two, five, five. Right now this is cool. You hit zip code, and that is we cool. we is that new? Uh, this it might yeah we yeah. launched it as a running change okay. feature. Yeah, yeah. we've I made a few upgrades either. here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. So that uh, a lot we we before we just asked temperature and altitude, and some people go, well, I don't know what temperature should I pick. Yeah, no, that's so, exactly right. So we pick the composite temperature where you live awesome. for you. We calculate this for yeah, you. Like you need to drag that temperature up. That's, that's when you've got a morning tea time. You exactly. get out <laughs> so, I just, so. I'd leave mine at 90, though, because I don't like playing in the cold. There yeah. you go. We'll go, we'll go 90. Yeah, this will matter. Exactly, yeah. This will matter. Okay. Um, and then driver launch conditions. So um, we're logged in as a fitter here, so it defaults to you know your launch conditions. Okay. Okay. okay perfect. Now, That's good. You can also we can also estimate them. Obviously, not as accurate. Oh, I, I know them. So, so. You, you would know them here. So. Ball speed is one hundred and fifty. Okay. Launch angle is like sixteen. Launch it sixteen. Spin rate's like two thousand. All right, we got the high launch, low spin. That is the Mark yeah. Tim special. Inside, right. up. Yeah, you can hit, hit balls on launch monitor as long it. as you want. Oh, yeah, four, yeah, five degrees. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So now this is new, Mark, since since uh, maybe we showed it to you, to you last time. So height preference. Before, you would have to kind of decide here. So what we've done now is we will take a look at your launch conditions and try to figure out for you how we should change the golf ball to get you to more optimal. Okay. Okay, so you just hit click this here, 
um, and it says mid. Okay, that means that for your ball speed, launch, and spin, your traject your your trajectory is pretty well optimized. I'm, we, I'm pretty high already. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So you're pretty well optimized. So that makes sense. You can override this. You know, that's though. interesting too. The driver height 102, 102. That's uh, actually Tylus mentioned that too. You know, the the height. Yeah. That's exactly where I'm at. 100%. Really? Yep. There you go. <laughs> So it's now really you, well done. you can override this if, if you're like seeing right. the ball fall out of the air or, do, do, you know, would you have a, a different preference here for? Um, I like it high, but okay. So I'd probably go medium high, but okay. I already Let's hit go it medium high. high. So, yeah. Now this is cool. Watch if, if we put this up to like 3,100, if those were your launch right. conditions and you hit calculate, watch this. It's going to say low, right? Now it's going to yeah. go to lowest yeah. trajectory. Yeah, I, so I drop this, below 2,000, like 1,800 a lot too. So Yeah. So this new feature is exactly how you yeah. pair club fitting and ball fitting together. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. put in your launch conditions, oh, you're too high, you're going to need the ball that flies the lowest, right? right? So so this is like an end of fitting thing. You basically do get all your numbers, and you look at your driver yep. averages at the end, and you say, okay, yep. this is where we are. Exactly. So I'm going to put it back. We're going to go mid-high. We'll go mid -high. And then wind performance. Uh, so how important is it to your not stability? That yeah, not that important. So we'll go not important. That kind of down down ranks that now seven iron so everything we're doing is driver seven iron do you right. know your seven iron launch conditions Oof. if not we can estimate them we yeah, can try that I estimate feature. them probably okay. i mean swing a seven iron at uh 83 miles an hour so, so probably 145 one, one, oh yards seven yeah iron? Uh, 165 okay we'll go 165 this will be fun to kind of show this and then launch high high spin low low well i mean i'm right around Let's try Hello. let's medium. Let's try medium. medium. And if you click over here, you'll see what we calculate for you. That's pretty damn close. 14, I think it's 20 19. degrees, 21 sometimes. But yeah, that's right about it. Okay. We can, yeah. we can go maybe pump uh, it up. You can override maybe 20, it. Yep. You know? And spin rate on a seven iron. That's about right. Okay. Yeah, maybe a little lower, six thousand. Yeah, let's go six. All right, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple different ways right, you can right. use it. Either. Yeah, yeah, Both of yeah. them are posts, right? Yeah. yeah. So like splitting hairs a little bit. You can be doing a driver fitting. You don't need to have your player hit their seven iron. You can estimate them, you know, so, or you do a seven, an iron fit. You don't need to have them hit the yeah. driver. You can estimate them or vice versa or get numbers on both. Um, and then we're going to hit stopping power preference. I'm going to calculate that for you. Uh, and what we're, what we're kind of, uh, you know, suggesting our algorithms is that you would, you would, uh, be better serve with a ball that shallowed your landing angle just a little. Yeah, but maybe. again, this is kind of up to yeah, you. No, no. Is that because yeah, the RPMs that. are high enough to dig in anyhow? Yeah, and well, the launch. And the launch. So right. the landing angle is pretty steep anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the launch, that launch is high. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah. It's good. It's good. <laughs> so if you if, if you want to follow our recommendations, we, we would give you no, kind of. that's right. Okay, yeah. so a ball that yeah, plenty uh, high enough. shallows your landing angle a little bit. Okay, what about workability in your irons? Do you care about that no. or do you just want the straight as possible? Yeah, pretty straight. Smart. All right, that's what I. That's what people should put. <laughs> well, when you when you practice on all spot, that's what you end up with, right? <laughs> exactly. And then flyers, you know, no. might not be that important to you. Not Arizona. But this is cool. This is where. Hey, I just, don't hit the rough much because I don't hit long enough so, to get there. <laughs> we talked about the micro max grooves on the I two thirty. So this is where golf balls also play a very big difference in how much spin retention you get. Yeah. yeah. So if you. If yeah, you, I was interesting about that. I was, I was doing some stuff. You know, we're working on some iron fitting. You know, with recommenders and stuff. And, and I was kind of, kind of thinking about that. So. Yeah. Interesting. You'll you'll see. Uh, if, oh, if, basically, it's stopping power, right? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Spin yeah. retention. Stopping power. The retention power. stuff yeah, is. So, is so throughout, actually, I asked Tom Mason. I'll ask you actually because it was a question I sent him an email last night. So, um, you know, if you're spinning a seven iron at uh, whatever six thousand RPMs, uh, and your land angle is forty eight, which is what a robot stuff is. Yeah. How much of that six thousand RPMs translates to when it's landing? Oh yeah, no. There's a there's a a pretty consistent spin loss. Like there's so much percent right, of spin so loss per second of flight across ah, the ball. Okay. Yeah. Right. For every every ball. Is there a balls that, that there is a little ball? bit of variability there? Obviously, the more speed and all that yeah. stuff, the higher so, spin. But so the way to think about this as a golfer is, it, Mark, you've hit that shot, or you've seen players hit like a fade that goes out there, and right. then it gets to the top of the flight, and then it starts drawing. Yeah. Have you seen that happen? Yeah, oh, not very often. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Bit. So. The reason why that's happened is, let's say your ball starts with, you know, you hit a drive, it starts with 2,300 RPM spin. Right. By the time to get it gets to its apex, it's lost a good percentage of that. And that at that point, it becomes a knuckleball, like a, a chaotic flight. Yeah. So it's got three options. It can keep fading. Right. You're just flipping a coin. It gotcha. can keep flip fading. You can fall down straight. Or it's going to fall down to the left, and that's because the spin decay. When I see those funny-looking shots, I always thought the ball was bad. 
Which yeah. is another way it happens, right? Yeah. I used to lay on a driving range yeah. and the balls were no nipples left and they do all kinds yeah. of weird shit. So, so just, it just runs out of gas, ball. basically. Yeah. yeah, it starts, lo- right yeah. when you start hitting, it starts losing spin. Yeah, right. Sure. And, you know, And it's a pretty consistent rate, but it does change a little bit by ball by ball. Yeah, and obviously dynamics. more speed. I mean, longer flight time makes a difference. The yes. harder you hit it, the more yes. detail you get because it's in the air longer. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, my speed, which is pretty average, whatever, it was it like, you know, 25% of a spins left or is it 50% or? No, it would be, I mean, like let's see, in a this. seven iron, it would be, yeah, between 25 and 50% would Lost. be left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, which would be left. Would so be you left lose between 50 and 75%. Yeah. What was that on a, se- oh, on a seven iron? On a seven iron. So is yeah. there more or less yeah. left on a driver because it starts lower? Uh, it starts lower. And, but the flight time's a little longer. bit longer. So you right, get more, right. more and, yeah. and there's less spin to begin yeah, with. Too. Less spin to begin with. Yeah. Right? So you know only that, 800 RPM. It, or usually it's a pretty consistent yeah. loss as a percentage of spin across most clubs. Okay. In, in general. Interesting. You know, so you're, kind of a percent of spin loss. Right. You really are benefit, you know, with a wedge out of the rough. You just want max RPMs. Just like absolute yeah. max. So it keeps it on there. It doesn't decay. It's a short shot anyway. And it's still ripping yeah. when it hits the green. Yeah. Yeah. That means you get good friction between the ball and the face. Yeah. 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 So flyer prevention, not that important here in Arizona, uh, but that could be very important to, you know, other parts of the country or other, other, other players right. where, you know, you have a lot of those mid irons in the semi rough or yeah. dewy mornings. That could be very important. Florida, okay. you always get that one that sits on top of the rough and just hops on you. And you're like, exactly. Oh. So you can see we're kind of walking through all the different categories. Right, We've done right. driver irons. Now we're on wedges. So full wedge spin. So what's fun about this is just kind of touch on our testing is we see balls that are high, like low spin on a driver. Right. They can be medium high spin on irons. Then, then they can be any number of spin rates on like full full wedge shots. And it's yeah. it, it really comes down to the the golf ball designers, and we're not experts at this, but having the different layers in the ball, in the and then especially when you get to wedges, you're only kind of compressing and in, in right. getting those One outer mile. layers to yeah. to interact, and then yep. you hit you, you know that was where the TP5 came from. You know, when Dean Snell was working at, uh, at, at TaylorMade, he was working with uh, Jim Furyk, and he, he went to Furyk and said, hey, I need my four hybrid to fly this many feet higher. And he's like, I got to design a five-piece ball. I need another layer right. there. It's going to be <laughs> too expensive. You know, and into that it was the start it, yeah. of the TP5 and the five-piece ball. It was for Jim Furyk to get his hybrid to go a little bit higher. Yeah, you know, kind so of the ball put TaylorMade on that. It was a five-piece yeah. ball. Yeah. So, uh, so full wedge spin. Um, you think you want something that spins more... Uh, uh, maximum, or well, probably right in the middle. Okay, like, right. I hit it so high, land angles most of it. Okay, like it's spinning off the green. That's no and way. then green side spin. So this as is much as possible. Okay, maximum. Yeah, that's like right. A lot, lot of Yeah, right. exactly. Okay, and then we're getting close to the end. So kind of finishing touches here. You know, and this is new too because we found a lot of people, Mark, like they they would say, "Well, I don't really care how it feels off the putter." You know, so it wasn't well, really important to them. So he's a long putter that weighs, you know. 5,000 grand or something. Yeah, so exactly. Feel is not the issue. So we could fl- we could turn this whole question off. I would just turn it off for Okay, me. so this is a new feature. You can yeah. just turn it off. And then I'm guessing you just want the best. Because I can't hear, so that kind of beats up the feel. <laughs> exactly. Thing, right? yeah. My head and speaker's too long. And then uh, we do allow folks to filter by, you know, one, two, or three dollar signs. I'm yep. guessing for you. I don't can, care. I don't pay for them. Yeah. We can <laughs> get the best possible. <laughs> I get possible more balls ball free than I game. possibly could lose. So what's fun about Balldynamic, we actually quote all of our, like, 95% confidence intervals for all of our metrics. Nice. So yeah, if you're into thing. that Tom's type of thing. Tom's doing the 95% confidence stuff along the robot. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you, you do Scrubs know. Scrubs all the bad information, yeah. Exactly. And then you'll see these trophies on on the results page. Right. Those will only show up if it's outside that confidence interval between balls. You know, gotcha. Is will show that difference. So they're actually yeah. So this is different. this is scientifically yeah. rigorous here. The results very areas. similar to how we yeah. do our yeah fitting stuff. Yeah. So uh, okay, here we go. This is the fun part. TP five X. Yeah. All right. Two Bridgestones. Look at that. Bridgestone Tour BX. I've not tried that one. Okay. That's a 97% match. That is a very high match score. That's like a composite yeah. score that looks at how well this ball matches what you hmm. needed and preferred throughout every single category. Right. And that 90, uh, 97% is very high. So you scroll down here, outstanding performance. So that's going to give you the top driver distance. So if you're like, all these balls, one way to use the results page here is, hey, all these balls are pretty good. I really want to like pick the ball that's going to go the furthest off the driver. You can just look at, it, what has the trophy there for driving distance? And you right? look, that's eight, you know, eight yards between that and the TaylorMade, which I, I like that ball actually, and, and yep. that was one of the balls we recommended before, and I tried it and I really liked it. Yep. Um, you know, that's a that's a substantial amount. 
Yeah, that's a lot. And so this is using our robot testing that's driving our aerodynamic model, matching it exactly to your launch conditions. Right. It assumes. And by that, the way, those numbers are dead on too. If I are they? nut it, two nineties is max I can possibly yeah, get. Yeah. You know, and we it. assume a you know medium firm fairway. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm medium, on a you know, foresight. That amount so, of roll. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Actually, on track. Track yep. with hard fairways. And there you go. You got your driver height. Yep. That's right so, too. So if you wanted it to fly higher. Um, you know, if yeah. that was like important to you, then the TP5X is going to fly higher, but it's going to cost you a little bit over on the distance side. Oh, no, that's you know. substantial. And then driver wind score, again, that's not, we said that wasn't too important to you. No, but it's good. But you kind of have that yeah. there for reference. So that's not really feeding the total match algorithm, but it's kind of in there, you know, in, in terms of decision making. Uh, seven iron carry, the, the Tour BX win, you know, gets the trophy for that one, but you can compare across those. Workability score, that's like a zero to 100 scale. Okay, well, I like that. I don't want it to go right and left. Yeah, and yeah. for you, if you hover over these, your target score is zero. Right. Because you don't want it to curve. <laughs> exactly. So the lower, the algorithm's looking at the lower, the better for you, right? right? Yeah. And yeah. giving you a higher score, if that makes sense. So, um, and then rollout, uh, again, that's uh, your target roll was 18.5 because you selected below average stopping power. So we're trying to match right. you to that number. Um, and then flyer prevention, again, that wasn't too important to you, but we were kind of returning that number. Yeah, got 100 anyway. Yeah, you said you wanted medium wedge spin, so your target was right in the middle, yep. 50. And so uh, the Tour BX, that you know that helped get the match score up there. It's right. very medium spin on full wedges, very high spin green side. We've seen that with both Bridgestone balls this year. Like both the Tour BXS and the Tour BX. Well, I definitely got to try them then because that's probably the most important thing to me. Yeah, that's new. For that and driver distance, to be honest with you. <laughs> I know they're both. I know you're like okay. Yeah. This spins a lot around the greens and it goes yeah. very far. So the Tour BX, and this is why I think one of the things um, golfers need to be mindful of is that every year, like the balls can change oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. So the previous version Tour BX didn't spin as much around the greens. Yeah. It and, could change quite a bit. And, I mean, there's all confusion with the titleist. You know, the the, the, the Pro V1 yeah, became the X, lower, next became flying the flying lower, you flying know. higher. You but know, it's so a combination I, of all. This I mean, stuff. that was part of the motivation for ball dynamic right. is to break through all that confusion and to keep up with all the performance mm. of the balls. And because ball, ball testing yeah. is really hard, as you said, Mark. So. Is it is it possible to pull up Mark's Callaway LS and see where that lands in the mix? Absolutely, yeah. So we can click back and do it. So we got. Uh, let's see. We, we returned five balls here. So the Tour BXS, right. uh, the Z Star, uh, XV, and the Wilson Triad. It's also kind of fun in here. You can, if you click on these, you get cross yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, We cut yeah. a lot of balls open. Just for yeah, fun. it is fun to do that. So, the pipe cutter. But, yep. <laughs> so that's always fun to do. Um, and we have um, simulated trajectory right. comparisons here. That's cool. So, because basically we have a ball trajectory model for every golf ball on the market. So these are your launch conditions feeding this, and you can also look at the driver flight into the wind. So you can determine, you can see, okay, if you're playing into a simulated 30 mile an hour headwind, I mean, that's a big headwind, but it can kind of exponentiate the results here, kind of flight comparison. So you can- oh, no, So the TP5 is like uh, five feet, six feet higher than the, than the bridge stone exactly. with the driver flight. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So that's what yeah. you would see if you went out and right. hit those no, no, golf that's, balls that's on the right. course. And so. you know what? It's so interesting about this stuff is, you know, I'm a decent ball striker, probably, you know, five handicap or whatever, but it's really hard to test balls. And we've yeah. done ball testing and fitting for tour players and stuff. Yep. And, you know, I had Timmy Clark in here a while back. This was years ago, whatever. And I'm, we're trying to figure out what ball he likes. And he stripes it. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't hit it that far, but he stripes it. And even then, it's kind of hard to figure out the differences because, you know, quarter inch or an eighth inch off, yeah. which, you know, for me happens all the time, you know, on average, this is what happens. Yeah. But on one or two shots, it's tough to tell. Yeah. So so when I've actually Titleist tried a fitting thing for me and you know, I couldn't figure out which ball, whatever, um, I think it's good recommendations. But I actually stick the robot up with my swing on it and tried it with a driver. And there was eight yards difference between all the different Titleist balls. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know. I think I'd have been there all day trying to collect data for myself. Yeah, yeah, hitting yeah. It, yeah. Down, that the end out, of it right? too. Yeah. So, so, so this is essentially what this is doing, right? Mark, I think what you're getting to is that there's there's a place, and you and you do this because you you do robot testing and player testing. Yep. There's there's a place for player testing. There's a place right. for robot testing. And when it comes to balls, the robot's very oh, yeah. important. Yep. Oh, <laughs> the yeah. Robot's yeah. very exactly. important. 100%. In calm yep. conditions, and right. then to get our um, our flyer thing, we we have a mister that comes up, sprays a per cool. controlled amount of mist on the golf ball. So we take the variable out of well, how much water is on the ball? Yeah, we got a you know same a, a misting fine, system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same amount each time. Shh, it started with ball. Marty with a with a pipette, and he was just dropping one on, dropping two yeah, on. Exactly. And they said, "Oh, we got to find a better way." <laughs> so, uh, 
So yeah, that you know, and 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 then I think what what's important about this is that the balls are that what's going to be optimal for you is going to be totally different than the optimal pairing for somebody else. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. for the launch conditions, for the preferences. Well, everybody has it definitely. It's you know, different swing. yeah, exactly. So yeah, we can go back. So we can do comparisons too. So if we go back and pick, you're playing the Callaway, Callaway. and then we'll go to uh, Chrome Soft X LS. Uh, yep. yep. And honestly, the reason I switched to that one, I didn't actually go through this. I remember you telling me that you know Phil won with that ball in yeah. the wind in the, in the U.S. Open a couple of years ago yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and, Kiowa. Uh, yeah. And it was the lowest spin ball. I'm like, why wouldn't I want the ball that goes the straightest and you know, yeah. hit it high enough anyway? Yeah, so, so that, is, that is a little <laughs> secret hack to Balnamic is that if you select lowest workability for irons, lowest flight on the driver, you will get the ball that end and uh, you, that you don't. Yeah, the best wind ball, you will get the ball that flies the straightest. So, so, oh. so, you know, golf ball can reduce your dispersion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think if anyone, any of you, you, you give up the, some stopping power usually with that. Happens, yeah, but, yeah. You know, I think, you know, for me, it was the ABX a couple of years ago. I'd go hit it, yeah. fly really low. Well, it also flies very straight. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. if you have a golfer that's wild, you can put in all those inputs and they'll, you'll help them hit it straighter. Right. That's cool. And so, yeah, we, we'll go back and, 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 and throw in your balls, the current ball. Click right through, and we'll get a comparative result. This is a cool part of ball dynamic here is that we get to see your current ball is a 91.4% yeah, match, right? which is pretty good. Yeah, it's long. Uh, yeah, it's only a yard off the tee different. Yeah, it yeah. is long. Driver height was a little lower. Um, and we can actually select. So we're right now you're, we're comparing it to the Bridgestone Tour BX, and so all these right. comparative metrics are relative to that. Gotcha. Flyer prevention, it's full wedge spin, it's going to spin more. Right. On your full wedge shot, it's going to rip more. And then it's actually not going to be quite as high spin around the green. It's okay. it's high, but, but our very, maximum very is very high. Okay, so it's not a bad ball for me. Yeah. Just, the yep. difference really is it spins more on the, uh, on spin, the wedge spin, shot. Yeah, it spins full a little, little less on the green. Yep. yep. So a little which, distance off the tee and a little more spin around the greens. Yeah, which isn't a bad thing. I pretty much land yeah. it, it stays where it lands. So. Yeah. If I tried the bridge stone and it kept going forward, I might I mean, go back to that. Who knows? That's a good example like there. The, the, the driving distance is almost the same. Like you're out on the golf course and you're trying to do this yourself. Yeah. Oh, no, you know, you, you're, you're hitting a mid-wedge shot and it's spinning higher. And then you're hitting a small wedge shot and it's spinning slightly lighter. You're never going to pick that as a no, player no. out on the golf course. But by my guess, I mean, if I'd have to hit like probably three or 400 drivers yeah. to sort through the data. That's a great analogy. So we, we've looked at that. How many shots do you need to hit on the robot? It compared to a, a player test, and yeah. you are absolutely right. We can hit five hundreds. shots on the robot that would be equivalent, equivalent to like five hundred with a player. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's a it's really good analogy. We're actually yeah. doing that, and we've done a, yeah. a driver <laughs> robot fitting, so we narrow it down the fitting to two clubs. Yeah, because that happens all the time. You know, it's not so bad for you guys. You're just fitting ping. It's easy. It's hit this one or that one. Oh yeah, we got ten different ones. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and it always comes down to like two drivers. Which one's the best? It's hard to tell. You know, mm -hmm. but stick them on a robot at the end, and you can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this, you can go to the compare flight. So I'm comparing your, your Chrome Soft XLS on yep. the driver. So the distance is going to be similar. You're going to get a little more peak height out of the Bridgestone. That's not a bad um, thing. And then you could go to seven irons. The Bridgestone is going to fly a little bit higher, but not yeah. much, right? Yeah. So, so you, you know, I think you, you go play this on the course. You probably see just, a, this would be probably discernible to your eye. Really? You know, but the seven iron probably, you know, undiscernible. What I love about this is, I mean, you, you know, everyone thinks ping. You're thinking golf clubs, you know, putters, those kind of things. This is just a, a super brand neutral, helpful tool for yep. golfers. It's yep. so cool. Yeah, yeah. You got, kind of like our philosophy, you know, play better golf means, you know, I'm going to direct people to this because it'll help them play better. And yeah. uh, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm so glad, like I said, you, you did this because this is a lot of work. Yeah, no. And <laughs> I trust you guys to do it. And the nice thing is you don't have a skin in the game. So, yeah. you know, yeah. there's no yeah. reason for you guys exactly to do right. You can do a good job because you're an engineering company. And and you don't you know, you know you got no preferences. Yep. It's kind of like we are in Switzerland with clubs. So totally. So we're we, ask. we we test ball. We usually update our database at least twice a year. Okay. And uh, in in we've seen now we've done like four or five database updates over the time we've launched the product. And in every every we're we're just comparing balls to each other. You know, in, in the marketplace right. and what's good and what's better match for one golf. Should we test at different speeds too? Yeah, we test at different oh, speeds. What, what speeds? Yeah, so we do the driver test at two different, at three different speeds. Right. So from, you get from, a line. From, yeah, exactly. So in and we've seen some interesting things happen there where you know balls will be a little higher. Will 
will be a little higher ball speed for the slower swing speed players, and then we'll get some separation at the higher speed. Yeah, we, we so, noticed that with driver fittings that we did. We just really yeah. started doing robot fitting stuff on uh, on drivers last year, and you know, some drivers work better higher speeds, and some work better. You know, yeah. it changes. Yeah. So we're actually now going to do 110. We do 95. We do a ton of testing on 95, but now yeah. we're going to do 110 and 80. Yep. as well yep and then you get some kind of idea yeah usually you know i think for balls i think we do like 90 uh 105 and then 120 right. somewhere, somewhere in that kind of range we get the yeah, you got tour players you need data for too exactly and then uh, we do a couple speeds on the irons and then we do the testing with the water on the wedges and then we it's really fun we set up our ping man and we do we do like a chipping test so the ping man will make its huge swing <laughs> and then it'll come down we use the motor it'll come down and just go and the ball just like goes into a bucket like 10 yards ahead that's pretty <laughs> but, cool but we can get the spin loft there so we get the right, right yeah, like, yeah. friction yeah. coefficient and and do that and then make sure it matches up with our player testing so um so yeah but but the results always change every time we update our database yeah. like you know the balls will change a lot in 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 the what what match you oh, good you one time will be at different the minimum the next time. you should do this once a year once a year yeah. once ball a changes year. and you got last year's pro v and we go this year's pro v without looking at seeing what the differences are yeah yep yeah. You, know, you can talk, look at all their marketing stuff and see if you can term it yourself. But, I mean, they've done all the hard work, so why not? Yeah, once a year and then every time you do a club fitting. So, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I think this is one of my favorite new features. You, you put in your launch conditions, you know. So you put in your launch conditions. Is so you put in, like, really low spin. You hit calculate. And then totally now it will tell you, you know, you need the, the highest trajectory ball. Right. You put the spin high. And then it's very nuanced, so it'll put you like, you know, medium high, medium low. You know, yeah, yeah, great yeah. way to fine tune spinning because you always end up with a fitting, and, you know, if there's an optimal that track man tells you or whatever, you know kind of what the optimals are. And, uh, yeah. you know, if you're not there, I mean, why not get there? Towards it with a ball. Yeah, right? absolutely. Rather than go in the other direction, yeah. right? Yeah. Tell everyone how to, how to get on here and, and use this real quick, too. Yeah, you just go to ballfitting.com and, uh, you know, you guys use it as fitters yeah. and, and guide your players through it. I know Sue's done that a lot. She's, she? helping, oh, good. Good. she's helping fit ball. We've had some customers reach out to us and they were, they were love really? working with her. Really? we got to do more of that. And, and, definitely uh, she, she helped fit ball and club together synergistically and then, consu you know, the consumers can go on it directly. Yeah. Just go to ballfitting.com, 39 bucks, go through it. Like Mark said, once a year. It's uh, less than the price of a dozen balls. Exactly and, right. uh, and by the way, if anybody wants to get this information too, you can just give us a call or send us an email. Because if we have all your fitting data from your last clubs you bought, yeah. we can plug all this thing in. It's Either better right than you guessing. We can so, include this in our, in our online sessions yeah. as well. Absolutely. It's, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So it's, it's best if you have launch conditions, but yeah. they're not required. Right. I think that's the cool part. Yep. You know? yeah. Um, so yeah, ballfitting.com, check it out. And uh, we also have a... A Twitter account at Ball Fitting. You can follow. Awesome. We put some cool stuff in there on wind and sh and how does wind impact dispersion and different optimizations. I mean, it's kind of the brand is all about being the experts at the aerodynamics. Well, of, just for of fun, maybe flight. we'll get you on here a couple times a year and you can update us on the new balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of seeing. Like, yeah, we'll see we, we like we the fit mark again. We'll exactly. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll have a new we'll have a new crop in there uh, right. in the springtime. Perfect. Yeah, after the PGA awesome. show. Awesome. All right. Thanks perfect. Up. Thank you very much again, and uh, we'll see you next time on the new ping stuff. All right. Enjoyed it. Cheers, Mike.